Hi, welcome to day 42 of the Easter tree. Today we're going to be talking about Jesus cleanses the temple. Our readings will be from Matthew chapter 21 verse 12 through 17, Mark chapter 11 verse 15 through 19, and Luke chapter 19 verses 41 through 47. This is not the first account where Jesus has driven out money changers. What we're talking about today during Passion Week is different from the first incident, which was documented in John chapter 2, verse 13 through 22. The first one happened after the wedding in Cana. That passage is where we hear the words from Jesus saying, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade or zeal for your house will consume me, or destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. But we know that he wasn't speaking about the temple, but his body. So that time happened before this event. I'll be reading from Matthew. The temple tax had to be paid in the local currency, but it had been so corrupt that Jesus is describing it as a den of robbers. Jesus is also judging the Sadducees here because the court had become a market. Only coins from Tyre were being accepted in the temple, and the money had to be changed before an offering could be made. It was convenient to have it close by, but the presence of this money exchange was making it difficult for true worship. So the traders were hanging out and creating this market in the Gentile court, and this was the only place the Gentiles could go and pray. In this book, again, another great reference, we see Herod's temple. Remember we studied the temple? So we have the temple here where you can go into the Holy of Holies and here is the outer courts. This was where the Jewish men could go and worship. So this is where the women could worship along with, you see the leper's court, you see where the Pharisees and tax collectors were. So outside the temple, there was a, a wall that separated where the Gentiles could go and where the Jews could go. So this was the Gentile court. They were not even allowed to sort of enter into the inner court with the women or with the men for sure, and definitely not the Holy of Holies. This is the Gentile court. This is where Jesus is cleansing the temple. Another thing to note is on this wall, if you were a Gentile, no entry written in three different languages in case you didn't understand. That's how strict it was. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. So when Jesus is saying house of prayer, he's directly quoting Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7. So he takes seriously for all peoples. He is saying being here in the Gentile court, you are being included in the covenant and you can enjoy the life of communion with God. Isn't that incredible? Even though Jesus' ultimate first purpose was to fulfill all the prophecies of the Old Testament regarding himself. He was teaching and healing, first and foremost, the Israelites, the Jews. Even in the midst of that, he is folding in and he is always leaving the door open for the Gentiles to be included into this covenant promise. Unless you have Jewish blood running through you, that is you and me. Yay! Jesus' anger is about racism. He is going on an anti-racist rant. He is angry that the Jews, the privileged, are exploiting the foreigners and all those who do not have access to the inner courts because of their skin color, their country of origin, or their pedigree. May we be equally incensed when we see this kind of behavior, especially when we see it in the church. Let us pray. Let us pray for racial reconciliation. There is enough of Jesus to go around. So as Jesus is driving out the money changers, he is angry. Of course, his anger is a justified anger. He's quoting Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11 through 20. He's saying things like, Has this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, declares the Lord. And when you go to the Jeremiah passage, you will see that God is very angered by the corruption and by the idolatry and the fact that the Israelites are taking offerings that are supposed to be pure and to strengthen the relationship between them and God. They're corrupting it, not being holy and devoted to God. We see from Jeremiah chapter 7 that the Lord is denouncing the idea that the physical temple guaranteed his blessing in spite of wickedness. 
And if you think about your own relationships, I'm sure you can tell the difference between people who are doing things in a formality, in a ritual way, and dealing with you or interacting with you, versus when they're sincere and they have gifts and offerings and just relationship with you from a pure love, from a pure concern or care and interest in you, rather than them looking to get something from you, or it's a guilt offering, or you know that they're trying to manipulate you in some way. If you can detect those things, how much more God can detect those things? For man does look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart, right? So let's not be that way towards the Lord. We know how it feels when people do that towards us. Let that be a mirror where we can see ourselves and we can see that's not how I want to be. That's not love. So let's repent, let's confess, and let's just ask God to help us to love him more purely. When Jesus is quoting Psalm 8, verse 2, Out of the mouth of babes and infants you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. You can note the contrast between the weak and the strong. Because of God, whose praise they sing, the weak silence the powerful. God ordained worship for himself. God ordained worship for himself from the lips of children. Jesus is indirectly claiming Deity, I'm God. Well, you can imagine this does not make the Pharisees and the Sadducees very happy. Jesus is specifically judging the Sadducean high priestly family. They were not attuned to the father of whose house it was. We see also in Mark chapter 12 verse 18 through 27 that they also didn't understand the resurrection. So be encouraged. I hope and pray that you are folded into the covenant promises of God and that you get to enjoy and delight in the communion with God that you can experience through Jesus Christ. It's real, and it is for you. I pray that you will receive it. Because of Christ, we don't just stay on the outer courts anymore. Through prayer and God's word, we can go directly into the Holy of Holies, past that curtain, and we can, because of Jesus, because of him offering himself as the offering, the perfect sacrifice, him cleansing us, and being our light and our bread and our, our high priest, that we can go into the Holy of Holies and we can worship God. He just knocked down those walls. Easter egg time, day 42, cleansing of the temple. Crack the egg. Ta-da! It was a whip. Well, I tried to make it look like a whip, but... So it's a piece of dowel rod and some wire and some twine that I made. I suppose you could even have a pigeon because that was what was mentioned. Time for application. If you're feeling excluded, if you're feeling like you're on the outskirts of being able to approach God, pray and ask Jesus to help you overcome that because the door is wide open to you. He gets angry at circumstances or people that would keep you from feeling comfortable to come into his holy of holies. Pshaw, go past it, enter in boldly, because he is for you and he loves you and he is fighting for you. And you see that as he cleansed the temple. He wants you to come and he wants you to pray and he doesn't want any obstacles that would hinder your worship. My offering is Jesus cleanses the temple, day 42. And you see, I tried to make fancy writing, and my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. But you have made it a den of robbers. And then I referred to the Jeremiah 26 verse. And you see Jesus with his whip. He's overturning all the money, the doves and the pigeons and the, the cattle, all the things that were acceptable as offering. You can go back to day six to understand a little bit more why these specific animals were here. And here, of course, we have the Pharisee that is not very happy to see this. Because I had this vision of a book, it sort of opens like this. So you see yesterday's Hosanna, he's entering the temple, and then you see the Pharisees walking and viewing the cleansing of the temple next. Well, thank you again for joining me. Remember to like, subscribe on Facebook and YouTube, and check out the resources below. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.